Hey guys and gals, it's Luthien, and along with Emrys, we are Girls with Sabers. This video is mature analysis of Star Wars and its universe. It is not intended for children 13 and under. We are so excited to have designer Spigatrix Lestrange with us on the show today. She has provided amazing insight into costumes and the symbolism and purpose behind every stitch. There is so much more to it than just fabric, and to have her expert knowledge of the trade is priceless. We hope you enjoy the show, and peace, love, and Raylo. So, we have a very special guest today on our podcast. Hi, guys. And I'm a costume designer, and, uh, and I'm an artist, uh, mostly known for being an Raylo artist, actually. And this is the reason why I know these two wonderful ladies here. And in case you didn't know, I'm Italian, as my accent can tell. How long have you been uh, in the costume business? So I started as a locker, a live action role player in uh, 2009. And then I actually started a small business here in Sicily with uh, so, sewing costume for lockers. So mostly medieval costume, uh, medieval costumes and fantasy costumes. Yes. And since then, I've moved forward. I work with theaters. I've collabed with um, um, uh, small uh, businesses who make filmmaking here. And then um, I ended up collaborating with a Star Wars-inspired uh, Lightsaber Academy here. Um, you're also a performer at the Lightsaber yeah. Academy. Yeah. What role do you normally take? Do you prefer Sith or Jedi? Oh, well. <laughs> Since I've been like 10 or 11 years old, uh, I've been a uh, Sith through and through, like literally. <laughs> I know I was a precocious child, but <laughs> I've always been a big fan of the dark side in general, like, you own it, which is yes. great. Yeah. I love that. Yes. Yeah. And the Sith have so they have much cooler clothes than the Jedi. Yeah. Like, yes. You can't go wrong wearing black. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it goes with everything. Yeah. Their lightsabers are cooler. Yeah. Their names are cooler. So true. Yep. Unfortunately, this time though, I have to uh, be a Jedi for this show. Oh. Uh, but. Um, at least I, I'm going to die at the end of this show. So, <laughs> so you can have a really awesome death. Yeah, <laughs> I like literally it. die by being split in two by a sword. Oh, so that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what color is your lightsaber um, when you're a Jedi? Since I wield a double light, no, it's more uh, like a saber stuff. Oh, cool. Which splits in two and turns into different lightsabers. Awesome. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, currently, my lightsaber as a Jedi is yellow, mostly because uh, the first Jedi came to my mind talking about light double lightsabers or saber stuff is Bastila yes. from the Republic. And she has a yellow lightsaber so I at least went with something that I slightly appreciated. Yes. I mean Revan is far better than that. Yeah. But <laughs> we have to, to settle at some point. So we're we're Darth Revan girls, so we yeah, can yes, we agree. I can't wait for uh Revan and Bastila come more into the forefront. I hope they do. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic coming, yeah. coming out. So then people will understand Raylo. Like, oh, exactly. Revan and Bastila, uh, Raylo, duh. Girls, I mean, I don't want to be too much all over the place, but let's be honest. The first thing I, I thought when I saw the last piece of trailer was like, Oh my god, they're going full Bastila, going dark. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going there. Okay. So, we wanted to talk to you about the evolution of Kyler yeah. Ren and Ray's costuming from The Force Awakens all yeah. the way through The Rise of Skywalker. So, let's start with 
arguably our favorite of the pairing. Can you talk to us about Kylo Ren um, slash Ben Solo's costume uh, and what you see historically that they're referencing? Okay. Yeah, uh, so basically, a little premise. I, by doing is uh, studying costume design, I also studied history of costume and uh, history of fashion. So there are patterns that are usually constant in uh, fashion and costuming, even in the um, in the film industry, especially in the film industry, even in fa- science fiction and stuff, yeah. which is not supposed to be related with the uh, Earth history, but we all as I'm being really pretentious right now. <laughs> I was about to say, we all as costume artists, no, I'm <laughs> way as costume artists, actually professional costume artists, are any anyway influenced by the society and their studies. So we'll, we'll all will see purposely or unpurposely some references. So um, the first thing, I, I, I'm not, I don't know if it's going to be a popular opinion, but the first time we saw Kylo in uh, The Force Awakens, it's pretty clear that he is basically cosplaying or trying to cosplay his grandfather. Mm-hmm. Poor, poor honey. Uh, he's <laughs> really trying to be someone else. <clears throat> I'm trying not to go full rail on this, I swear. Um, you can go ahead. Yeah, and release Thank the Raylo beast. <laughs> um, because of course we have this um, the portrayal of this character on all of these insecurities, and we know. I'm sorry, my sewing machine that decided to fall on the table. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm like, Vader is is like a firm point in his reality is one of his rare certainties Mm -hmm. so it's clear that he needs to uh, absorb that kind of security in him and costuming is a way of storytelling as I say once to one of you a few months ago and that costume is exactly that he is, doesn't know what he is, yeah. but he is certain or what, at least at that point, or what he wants to be. And he wants to be what his grandfather was to the Empire. So we have the long tunic, which covered the legs, which is typically Vader. Uh, we have the whole mask. The mask is the most obvious and clear sign of that of course and the the fact that johnson decided to smash the map at the, the beginning of the the first day the, of the last jedi is a clear sign it's clear language that shows the struggle of trying to understand the inner nature of this character despite the preconceived notions about himself yeah so we have this very theatrical and dramatic costume at the beginning, in which uh, Kylo shows up without showing anything of himself. So we don't have an inch, a single inch of skin outside, just like his grandfather. Mm-hmm. But he is trying to not even look human, non, not even look relatable. Yeah, and being basically. A machine is it of course that his grandfather was actually part machine to survive but he goes so deep in his need to be something else of be of being what he needs to be that he he doesn't care he doesn't even care he covers himself like in a blanket in a huge costume or in a dramatic costume to not be self-conscious about himself and just to show what he need people he needs people to see. I I read something I believe in the the visual dictionary for Force Awakens mm-hmm. that the cow that they put him in was literally strangling the light 
like suffocating the light that is within him. Um, do you think he was also channeling the royalty of his grandmother in the cowl that he wears in the fourth season? Well, um, the cowl that he wears uh, uh, with the little uh, mount on his shoulders actually is very, very similar to uh, the same that Amidala wears in uh, this episode two. Yes. In, um, um, I think it's the um, arena scene, in the arena scene, when they end up fighting. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I don't know if it is accidental or I don't think it's totally accidental. I mean. Uh, but it also works in two different ways, because mostly for one reason. Uh, that particular piece of outfit in Amidala works in the opposite, in the opposite way, because for her standards, that one is a very simple and a very clean and uh, mm, let's say poor piece of outfit considering her usual way of dressing. Yes. Instead, um, in Kylo, it helps. It's also a bit, a bit rugged if you know this in Kylo. It, it makes his figure even more large, even more heavy. Yeah. So, and also reminds me of uh, Revan's food. Yeah. Mm, mm -hmm. The outfit is really inspired from uh, uh, Revan's uh, uh, illustration from Acts of the Old Republic. Yeah. Even the mask has very similar lines, if you remember. On um, Kylo's mask, they, they used chrome <laughs> as the metal. Is there yeah. any significance in that, that particular choice of element? Well, uh, let's just say that uh, it's also, a, for me, I'm not in the developing team, unfortunately, so I can uh, I can know exactly. But to me, it's also a um, aesthetic choice. Uh, we have to remember that uh, nowadays we have a lot more attention on details, like, if we think about the technology we had when there was a, the actually first trilogy, not the prequel trilogy, the original one, costumes like Kylo, like from Kylo or from Plasma, it wouldn't be, would have been that interesting to watch. Yeah. Mostly because we don't have post production, we don't have high resolution cameras and stuff. So I thought that it is interesting to look at it like a tiny sparkle of light in the general black of his outfit, mm. mostly, mostly because, well, I can, I could go full tinfoil art if you want, but it, it's going to be a lot, tinfoil art style. That's okay. So, <laughs> Because if you go with the sparkle of light thing that I just said, and you think, well, the only not black thing is on his face, on his mask, which is the, the embodiment of his needs for hiding. It's interesting to think that maybe he's not that good at hiding the tiny sparkle of light that is left in him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I always thought it was interesting that referencing Padme's outfit in Attack of the yeah. Clones, that cowl that was wrapped over her mm -hmm. came off. Um, and what is the the scene that we see when that cowl 
yeah. comes off. She she finally admits her feelings to yeah. Anakin and that she really loves him and they have a kiss. That cowl is gone. It doesn't matter how that cowl came off. The point is that that cowl is gone. She's not yeah. hiding anymore. Yeah. And the same thing happens with Kylo. That cowl comes off in the next film and it yeah. is a cape. And what does he do? He he is sharing this force bond with Ray and yeah. he says you aren't alone. He is having the most intimate relations yeah. with um another character that he's had since we've seen him. Also, let me check one thing because a thing just popped into my mind. If I'm correct, actually the cow disappears during the fight scene on the yeah. circular bridge for the first time, which is also their first violent but yet intense interaction. Did he he didn't have it when he uh was on the bridge with Han. Did yeah. he? He was and those are undoubtedly their his most raw scene in yeah. that movie. Yeah. Do we want to talk about that man's hair, really? Because we could spend, like, whole night talking about that. That's but, okay. Oh. <laughs> yes. That's, That's true. That's totally fine with me. <laughs> so, oh, um, Kylo Ren's hair, let me count the ways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, my opinion, as a costume designer and character designer, so... I'm totally professional right now. I feel incredibly sa- silly to see this, to say this, but I think that those hair are clearly storytell- storytelling themselves. I mean, when he is super um, sure of himself, the more he's sure of himself, the more those hair look really structured. And the more, more he is messy, the more the messy of the hair are like, to me, the funniest thing about those hair, actually, is the scene in um, The Last Jedi in which Rey arrives in the Star Destroyer. One moment before, they were both distraught and messy and humid. And they look like they were about to go to bed separately. Okay? Yes. Very separately. The moment after his waves are perfect, like he just had the the first order hairstylist combing his hair or something, and she has a full makeup on, and I was like, seriously, mm-hmm. yes. guys, yes, you took you both took the time to do that. Okay, <laughs> priorities, yeah. interesting. Okay. They're on a date. (laughs) Well, he literally has the prince coming out of the smoke. I mean, the smoke (laughs) clears, and here's Kylo Ren, and his hair is quaffed, and he's ready to go like, hey, baby. Hello there. (laughs) You've got more the words of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hello there. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Yep. So from a costume uh, pointer's point of view, there's no denying that when she ships herself off in that coffin pod, she has her makeup yeah. on. He has his hair all clothed. That is a date, and that's intentionally. Like, seriously, I've been to dates, and I've been far less creepy and calm than that. Than that. Okay. <laughs> I, okay. I'm going to dates in babushes. Yeah. And they took the time to look all pretty and... And cues for the other during the war. And I was like, hmm, that's some effort. Okay. Yeah. Yes, they put an effort. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you talked about how in The Last Jedi, he yeah. is not wearing just a mantle. He's actually yeah. wearing right. the, the padding that the padding, yeah. wears between his uh, mantle and his armor. No, it's no. like the actual cushion. Could you talk yeah. about that a little bit? No, well, yeah, sure. Well, um, there's a particular piece of uh, medieval clothing 
male clothing, which is called gambeson. Gambeson was this peculiar jacket, long jacket. Usually it went to the knees. Um, it's, it's actually a padded jacket, which was supposed to alleviate the discomfort of wearing a metal armor. So it looks very like what Kylo is wearing in The Last Jedi. Uh, also the stripes, which keeps the padding together, are very similar to actual medieval motives that you can see in uh, various gambesons. And the interesting part, actually, which made my mind go wild as, as usual, because mm. I'm not an overthinker at all, um, he turns aesthetically into full knight. He was to, he's called more a knight in the first movie, but he looks more like a knight in the second one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also know, because I've read a few interviews and stuff, that actually Driver required to tone down a bit the um, costume for practical reason, because it feel, felt very unco- uncomfortable fighting in all of that. Yeah. So, and I fought in an armor with a gambeson with a lot of stuff on in my life a few times, and it hell. So I feel him. Totally, I agree. But they went with simple nightlike lines for toning the costume down. I suppose you both know about the whole theory about Joseph Campbell dragging the anthropology into Star Wars to make plot lines that resemble mythology. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Right. <laughs> We're a little familiar. <laughs> yes, thank you. I can talk to no one about this. <laughs> We're here <laughs> for you. I just walked to death by all this stuff. <laughs> We're here for you. Thank you. <laughs> so, just to make things short, in the original trilogy, we have the hero's journey in which Luke, as Harter or as Many others in many other mythological situations being joined by a wizard like figure that is what we can all be uh, going on the quest to defeat evil. Okay, we have the, the basics. We um, have the fall from grace, like the um, uh, Lucifer's being thrown out of heaven thing in the prequel trilogy. The medieval night quest yeah. like the quest for the holy grail uh, and stuff like that so the knight ends up re- redeeming himself from something by searching for the object for the let's say the MacGuffin, which is the embodiment of light yeah the, um, Joseph Campbell talked about how the Holy Grail is actually symbolic of love. That once yeah. the knight finds love, he finds the Holy Grail. Um, yeah. I loved our discussion about going back to the padding where he wears that padding because he's almost like a fragile baby. <laughs> like he needs all yeah. that cushion <laughs> because of um, his wounds. Um so us fans calling him a baby is actually a correct um <laughs> correct not, not not that name, but that's, an, that's another story uh oh honey you know what i mean um in italy we have a thing that we call the nurse syndrome i think that the most accurate translation to english is the uh, florence Nightingale syndrome yes you, know, uh... you see something or someone broken and devastated and wounded by life and you just have to oh my god I'm going to save you from yourself yeah that's the, like the first instinct that comes to me when I see that character yeah no matter like six foot three murderous giant or something <laughs> you okay. baby who must be protected <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, look at what Ray does. She finds out what what happened uh, at the Jedi Temple, and she holds his hand, and she sees what she sees, and boom, she's off. She is going, and she's going to save him. It's I'll so help you. <laughs> so she gets exactly what what I mean. I mean, mm -hmm. cool. And their interaction is really interesting because they. Actually, even if there was there are a few differences between the book and the, actual, the novelization and the actual movie, um, I noticed at least that their interactions is kept very pure and very blurred. I mean, there's romance, but people can also see in their affection without romance. Yeah, mm -hmm. like kindred spirits finding themselves. Uh, partly love in uh, the medieval times. Yes. Like medieval mythology. The touch of a hand or the the day mending a tiny string of a hair or, or something like that to the night was a symbol of affection that wa went beyond the romance. Yes. Also because usually the dame or the lady was not um, available for a romantic interaction back there. So it's so it will be interesting to see how, where th this is going to go. I mean, of course, I am for the full cheesy final with a ton of babies and all that. But <laughs> I try to actually keep my expectations as low as possible or I'm gonna leave this kind of like roaring and shutting myself into the sun but <laughs> yeah uh, we Italians we were usually very dramatic because mostly we invented drama I don't know if you know that but it's pretty evident at this point yes <laughs> anyway we wanted to talk about Ray's costume, like yes. normal, balanced, and professional people, I suppose. <laughs> yes, let's let's that. continue forward. Yeah, we can go back. Also, because later we have to talk about those pants. Yes. And yep. I'm not ready to talk about that. <laughs> right so now. So Ray's evolution then, uh, getting yeah. getting to her her costuming from the Force Awakens to the Last yeah. Jedi. Um, you said that was uh, very interesting. Her costuming mm -hmm. and the development of it. First of all, we have uh, at the beginning of the Force Awakens we have a uh, Ray costume, which is lovely to me. It's probably my favorite of hers, uh, which is deeply and clearly inspired by. North African traditional fashion. There are a lot of uh, tribes who still live in the Saharan desert. You use things that are, especially the turban, is clearly inspired by that. Yeah. Uh, it also has a practical use because you have these strings of fabric which you may go down and cover part of your face, which are a practical choice. And the, the the covering, which is soft and light, but still covers from the sun, from the sunburns. So it's a very practical um, outfit. I would say that the whole um, um, parts of the from the waist down are not that practical. I have to admit, but they are really aesthetically pleasing. Also, because they had to. <laughs> show her side by side with the same costume with Kylo, which has a, a really similar flow to his the fabric of his dress. If you mm -hmm. think of the final duel in the Force Awakens, but the whole costume is really clearly and a statement of practicality, de facto. So you have um, things to cover you from the sun. Uh, the belt with all the stuff that makes you uh, be practical if you need, uh, items if you need, the tools and stuff. 
and but also you have the sense the sense of how rough and how dangerous and unpractical the whole environment in which she lives is actually and then after that you go from the unpolished and a bit raw outfit that she wears in the first play, in the first part to the she playing a let's say to me it's my opinion of course a bit of dressing up like the costume she has from the resistance at uh, the hand of the force awakens it's ray try, clearly trying to find her place she goes from full jackal to full resistance with yeah. nothing in between mm-hmm. so please it's like a statement like please i want this place to be my place to be this basically yes she's literally wearing their clothing like she yes. takes it from the base and it, it looks very it looks much more masculine to me than her her garb in the force awakens it's like that yes that vest and um i'm sorry um it's also more military like yes. it's like the it resembles a bit the um, except for the small jacket the the gilet it's like very similar to a uh, po- um, to Poe's uniform when he's not on the the Hicks wing. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's like a, a clear evident statement of her trying to fit in in the place she thinks she's supposed to be. Wow, oh, that's mm-hmm. really interesting. Yeah. Um, when you are at the, at the Force Awakens and she finally wears the, uh, let's call it the um, throne room outfit, it's between the two of them. Because you have um, resistance co- colors, like the gray of her jacket is now also in her tunic. Sharp, clear lines like you have in the resistance outfit, but also you have the long, um, soft um, portions of fabric which are proper to her jacu outfit. Yes. So, so she is actually exploring between the two. And to me, her interaction with Kylo helps her define herself mm. a bit more. Also because her colors go a bit darker, which I appreciate for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but also her going dark and contrasting with the very light gray of the soft part of her, of her outfit is far more in contrast and nuanced compared to the previous outfits. So it's like an evolution. Mm-hmm. And I'm really, really curious to see the um, the rise of the Skywalker costumes. Mostly because right now we have seen only two, which are the full white of the beginning of the... which we have seen since the first trailer. <laughs> which is a bit extreme to my opinion. It's like to me, that costume says, hey, I gave you my trust. I allowed you to tempt me to the dark side or at least meet me in between. But then you basically decide the career of a feeling. So you know what? Full white. I've made my choice. See you. Mm. Yeah, pure white. What, what do you think the significance of Ray wearing the hood is with that costume? As, I mean, it could be like Kylo wearing a hood at, at this point, only reverse. Like, I am, now I am the one putting a barrier between me and the outside world. Yeah. Yeah. I've made my choice, and uh, 
you you tem- tempted are you tempt as a word i don't know if it's the right one my, you make me doubt my position but your final let's say betrayal uh ray surely perceived that as betrayal i guess um i've made me even stronger in my position my initial position and this is to me we still have seen very little of this costume to me this is why she dressed like that to state even more that now she's even firmer in her position with the light as a result with her interaction with uh, with um, child So do you think she's wearing the hood to hide, but also to hide her feelings yeah. from a bend? She's a little more detached, I right? guess. Okay, okay. So, yeah, that's amazing. And also the black one, but the black one, of course, made me incredibly happy for obvious reasons. But I'm really, really doubtful about that very tiny piece with the dark ray, to be honest. Mm-hmm. To me, if I have to be completely honest, they're not going to give us dark ray. Yeah. It's probably going to be like a dream or an hallucination like the one Luke had when he was in the robot. Mm-hmm about seeing himself in the Vedder's helmet. I only hope they keep the line of um, keeping Ray and Kylo out as the two parts of the same character, as Ryan Johnson used to say. And uh, they put the vision of Ray being dark in a, a Kylo's vision to make him realize about one, him preferring her being, following her own nature. Yes. It does. Of course, the, like the reason, perfect reason into me would be, yeah, you will be grateful and pleased to see her in the dark, but this vision will show you that actually uh, she won't be herself anymore by not being in the light to make him realize what actually is better for her and for him. How do you feel about her hairstyle, seeing it as the three yeah. buns in The Force Awakens to still the three buns in The Last Jedi, but then she wears it down and now we're back to three buns but they're they're a bit different than what we saw them at they're first. more captured yeah i feel like her dress like her hood it's even more of a statement i think it reinforced the statement of having even stronger convictions based on the fact that now she feels the need uh, to be linked to the light even strongly strongly. No, I, I don't I forgot how to speak, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Basically the hair the hairstyle is part of the dress in this case as a way to communicate a message, um an emotional state of the character. Very well going from uh immature almost pigtail like yeah. hairstyle the one she was left with that as a child so yeah, exactly. when her quote-unquote parents come back they recognize her but she's stuck in that state that childlike yeah. state and mentality and then of course she meets the soon-to-be love interest and her hair comes down it's very padme and leia when they finally have, have mm-hmm. fallen in in love the hair is down their inhibitions yeah. are a bit more gone this but now absolutely- her conviction is there but these buns they're all connected, they're structured, yeah. they're they're perfect for you know. It's like she is holding to what she knows of herself and trying to be stronger on her strong on what she sees as her strong points. Mm-hmm. Also, the you make me think of the thing that 
um, actually, the where that the the wearing the hair down thing, it's very ancient and very radicated, at least in European history. Mm -hmm. Only because since medieval times, even something before, like probably uh, around Roman times, um, you as a woman were supposed to cover your hair with wigs or with bales or mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, mostly as a form of modesty, this is not the case, like luckily, but. Uh, when you were in a state of intimacy with someone, like your husband, your family, you were allowed to show your hair because it was the natural thing to do, to show yourself uh, as naturally as possible to your loved ones. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Padme does that, Leia does that, and Ray partially does that too. It's interesting to say, to notice, actually. I, I didn't think about that. Yeah, it it's it's interest it'll be interesting to see obviously there's the very uh practical no, way sure. of wearing the hair keeping it out of your face but also the fact that we need scenes with with Leia and it needs to harken back to how her hair kind of was in that film more to be more mm -hmm. to to work in these scenes with with the the sh the shots that they have um, but I, it'll be interesting to see if we see her hair down again at some point and how, how it comes down, um, will be, will be interesting to see. I, I truly feel we've only seen in these clips, we've only seen the first quarter of this film. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, actually, probably we... The fact is, we are seeing a lot, a very lot of Ray, but mm -hmm. we are seeing very little of Kylo. Yes. That makes well, me think that there is a lot of screen time in which Kylo is yes. is going to be very different from the way we are used to see him. What I love in all the, the clips that we've seen, mm -hmm. we have not seen one where his mask is on, but yet in all the promo and the new posters and yada, yeah. yada, yada, he always has the mask on, which okay, makes me wonder if that's actually him. To me, it's... A, hey. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. We Italian, we, we, we make very strange noises sometimes. <laughs> uh, like, oh, you're right. You're very loud. We are very loud people, especially in the South, and I'm the Southest of them. Um, which is not even correct, probably, but okay, you get that. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a very interesting point of view, uh, if you think about. Also, because in the very tiny scene in which you see the mask being repaired. You don't see him repair, actually repairing it. Yes. But you, we have see, we've also seen, I think it was like um, a snippet caught from the last convention in Chicago, in which they yeah. released a few more clips. There was a scene in which he was driving his... Um, um, ship, his ship. Mm -hmm. I was trying to remember the model, but I can't because anyway. Um, and he is actually looks like hell, like he, he's been through hell. Yes, he does, yes, <laughs> he does. He's all bloody and uh, his yeah, hair is all, all... dirty and bloody. And the face of why, why all, all of this to me? Why? And they're like, oh, honey. Well, <laughs> you made a, a few poor choices, actually. <laughs> to, my probably most um, popular opinion ever. We have to talk about those pants. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We that. Yeah, we did not. We did talk not about the pants. Yeah. We saved the best for last. Yes, we did. So, let me be clear. 
<laughs> as a fashion designer student, those pants, for the way they are tailored, the way they're designed, are the wrongest thing <laughs> that ever happened to a male body <laughs> in history of fashion. I agree with that. Thank you. Um, Thank I have you no, so I have no professional bearing on fashion or clothes, but that made one hundred percent sense to me. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank You're you. welcome. Yeah. yeah. I so, agree too. You have an actor, a performer like Adam Driver, which is thick as hell in a good, very good way. Don't mind me. I, yeah. I'm not complaining at right. all. He is a big man, a tall man, with a very large torso. If you put, and my, I can speak for experience because my boyfriend in real life is actually with that body structure, only with less gym, unfortunately. Okay. So, okay. I from a direct experience. Yes. 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 If you put him in a very high waisted pants, you're going to make him look like he like he really, really, really needs to cut off carbs and stuff. <laughs> Right, yes, right. I agree. So yeah. there was no, there was no um, symbolism behind that that costume choice, uh, except possibly he's covering. Uh, he, it's also probably back. wrapped with a bandage around where Chewie shot him with the bowcaster. Well, but at that, at that point, it would have been better to show us the bandage. Oh, yeah. truth, yeah. truth. It would have been, it would have made him even more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And it was to see in that scene. But those fans are like embarrassing. Well it didn't and do it it didn't do him any favors. It didn't yeah. uh I know, you know, he was supposed to be topless from the the waist up to signify that they can yeah. see each other. That Yeah, exactly. You know, the yes. is, even in Italy, when where Adam Driver is not considered a particularly attractive man, I was at the movies and People actually squealed a little around me. <laughs> when that was up. worldwide. Like, <laughs> global. There was like this typical telenovela squeal, like, <gasps> yes. and I was like, yes. uh, the, the typical, of, well, I think he at least has the body thing. Uh, and I was like, I couldn't even enjoy that. I was like, those pants, yeah. what did they do to you? <laughs> Poor baby. Again, it all comes back. Poor to baby, me. again. The whole scene is trying to act, act really confident, really uh, forward. He's uh, imposing, he is aware of being imposing in a position of dominance because she is uncomfortable seeing him mm -hmm. like that. And uh, the fact that he would have shown himself that way, even with the scar, would have been even a stronger concept to show. But no, we had to go with those pets for some reason. <laughs> the fact is, they lose a chance to me. Yeah. You, you, to be honest. I think the pants made it a bit more... Ridiculous. Ridiculous, <laughs> yes, and comedic than than it yeah. should have been that that yeah. the intention was which is which is which is a shame um yeah that scene feels to me like okay we need to make the woman in the um, in the audience interested but at the same time we don't have to scare the children off so <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah. for the way he dresses in that scene i was like he was wearing Black, uh, white socks and sandals, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> at this point. Socks and sandals. Okay, On that socks note. And <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but guy. It's hard on driver. It's really hard to make him look silly. I mean, yeah. he's... Uh, 
a six foot two, six foot three, I, I can't remember. Man who was in the Marines. Yes. Who has hands like shovels. And you managed yes. to make him silly. Yes. They managed to make him look silly in that moment. Yeah. We agree. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool baby again. Yes. Oh, cool baby. I can't wait to see him in this film, though. I mean, we only have seen him in his, you know, cape and his regular garb, but I do want moments where he has to possibly dress like someone in the resistance, maybe? I mean, let's change up. The thing is, the to me, and this is a total painful theory, so don't mind my words too much. But to me, the fact that we are seeing so much Ray and so little of him, it's it's very intentional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because probably it's going to have a lot of screen time, as I say, dressed very differently from what we expected him to wear. Yes. I yes, agree. I agree. It's very interesting to me. Some things cannot be forgiven or forgotten. Like no yeah. Ray should anyway. say that. Ray should say, I forgive you, but not for the pants. Yep. No. <laughs> the first thing there she's got ever going to give to him would be size appropriate pants, I yeah. suppose. <laughs> I, would. I hope so. Me too. I would. It was yeah. a huge pleasure and it was so fun thank you so much for having me girls it was amazing it was it was awesome and really really insightful I mean there are some things I already knew about the costuming and what it means uh for a character but it was so interesting to hear all of this yeah Um, Yeah. really really wonderful to have you on you were so much fun and thank you for doing this uh, may the force be with you. <laughs> yes. You're well. And remember that the dark side has cookies, so you're always uh, welcome to join us on this side whenever you yes. want. Yes, you had me at cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we also have, uh... And lasagna. Hello, this is Emrys, and with Luthien, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell icon that will give you notifications every time we post a new one. And of course, like, comment, and do all those things. <laughs> Peace, love, and Raylo, guys. All magic comes with a price.